I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I'm an expert, and I'm a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong, and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dr. Richard Harden. We are on the same mission, which is Waking Up America. We just have different paths. So stay tuned for some information on how you can keep up with Richard and all his work. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. The following message contains a special offer for listeners of this station. Are you a man over 40? Are you constantly looking for the nearest bathroom? Do you wake up multiple times a night to use the bathroom? Right now, Perfect Prostate is sending out free bottles of their groundbreaking new formula to listeners of this station. Perfect Prostate Formula was developed by medical doctor Mitchell Fleischer, and its ingredients have been clinically studied to reduce your frequent nighttime bathroom visits and promote healthy urine flow. Right now, preferred customers get their first bottle of Perfect Prostate absolutely free. There's nothing to lose. Perfect Prostate is guaranteed to reduce that constant urge to use the bathroom, especially at night, and promote healthy urine flow. Don't wait. Call now for your free bottle. Just pay shipping and processing. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. Supplies are limited. One free bottle per household. Call now. Dial 1-800-675-0251. That's 1-800-675-0251. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse, and I'm so happy to be back with you guys. Sorry I missed you unexpectedly last night. I apologize. No, really, I do. 
But I kind of have a good excuse. If I said emergency room, would you excuse me? It turns out I've got a broken right hand. No, I didn't punch the wall. Sorry, that's not what happened. Any reports to that say that? Sorry, they're mistaken. Now, what did happen was I kind of tripped and fell, but there's a little bit more to it, but we're not going into it right now. We are going to get on with the news. Don't I always have news for you guys? What do you mean I don't always have news? I always have news. I've got an audio soundbite, and then we're going to talk about it. Oh, yes. We are. Actually, I've got two sound bites, and we're going to talk about both of them. Yes. And then, of course, I've got more sound bites and more stuff to talk about. Don't I always? You know I do. All right. Moving right along. Let's get to the first sound bite. And this is from Jen. National Security Advisor General Michael Flynn. Of course, he's no longer a general, but just wanted you to give you, give you his background without having to explain it. The Obama administration failed to respond adequately to Tehran's malign actions, including weapons transfers, support for terrorism, and other violations of international norms. The Trump administration condemns such actions by Iran that undermine security, prosperity, and stability throughout and beyond the Middle East and place which places American lives at risk. All right. I think that he's getting somewhere. What do you think? I know I'd be a little bit quaking in my boots. Now, let's move on to our second audio clip. A lot, same person, same speaker. President Trump has severely criticized the various agreements reached between Iran and the Obama administration, as well as the United Nations, as being weak and ineffective. Instead of being thankful to the United States in these agreements, Iran is now feeling emboldened. As of today, we are officially putting Iran on notice. All right. Uh, I think that's his way of saying there's a new sheriff in town. Oh, yeah, there's a new sheriff in town. I wouldn't want to be in Tehran right now. But then, I'm always warning you guys against visiting that crazy place. Always. Always and always. Alright, moving right along. Let's talk about Iran since Iran is the lead-off topic of the day. Oh! Of course I have Inherent Resolve updates. Now, Russia and Iran... Oh, you didn't hear the show prep stack. Well, when you have a broken right hand, it's kind of hard to hold a stack of paper. So I'm having to do things a little differently tonight. I should have my stack of paper back tomorrow, although I may not be able to pounce it off the desk for you guys. Yeah, I know. And you guys can kind of blame Host Kitty for this one. He kind of tripped me. Moving right along. Russia and Iran are aligning more than ever. In Tehran on, on Tuesday, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu and his Iranian counterpart, Defense Minister Hossein Delgan, signed an agreement on military cooperation between the two countries. The signing of intergovernmental agree the intergovernmental agreement on military cooperation is a significant step in re strengthening the relations, according to Shogu. Shogu noted that the thinking of Russia and Iran regarding the situation in the Middle East and Afghanistan was closer. He also noted that during the meeting, both sides stressed the importance of coordinated efforts to combat, inter combat international terrorism and drug trafficking. Now, this is not the first time I've told you about Russia and Iran being buddy-buddy, now is it? Nope. Of course 
you, if you listen to my show, you know that Iran recently launched a missile. And they're not supposed to do that. They are not supposed to do that. Now, I don't have any audio about it, but at least I don't see any that I have. Sorry, I'm trying to work left-handed, and I'm a right-handed person. So this has been a little bit of a struggle for me, but hey, I wasn't going to leave you hanging for more than one night. Nope. Wasn't going to happen. So Iran launched test launched ballistic a ballistic missile or I'm guessing multiple ballistic missiles probably but the media usually only reports one no matter how many they launch So they said it wasn't in violation of UN sanction 2132 because that sanction says you can't do anything with ballistic missile technology. Hossein Delgan said the test was in line with his with Iran's plans, and he insisted the country would not allow foreigners to interfere with their defense affairs. Oh, excuse me, it was the UN Resolution 2231, which calls upon Iran not to undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles designed to be capable of delivering a nuclear payload. Iran says its nuclear program, of course, is, in, is entirely peaceful. And it's going to continue m missile development. By the way, one of the missiles was very similar to a North Korean missile. What? You don't remember me telling you that North Korea and Iran are swapping missile development strategies? Hello? You better go back in the archives, because I have. I do know I have. I didn't have time to look up the date before I came on air, but I promise you, it's there. Iran's defense ministers confirmed it tested a new missile, but said it did not breach the Islamic Republic's nuclear accord with world powers. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. The nuclear cord and the ballistic missile thing, they're similar, but they are <coughs> they are not identical. Nikki Haley, the, US the new U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, called the test unacceptable. Mohammad Zavad Zarif, Iranian foreign minister, said on Tuesday that Tehran would never use its ballistic missiles to attack another country. I'm calling horse hockey on that, folks. Why do they keep saying they want to wipe Israel off the map. That's another country. I don't care if you don't recognize them. It's another country. Hussein Salami, deputy head of Iran's powerful Revolutionary Guard Corps, said on Sunday the day of the test that the country was now one of those few whose ballistic missiles were capable of hitting moving objects. Such a capability would enable Iran to hit enemy ships, drones, or incoming ballistic missiles. Some of Iran's precision-guided missiles have the range to strike its regional arch-enemy, Israel. And, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu called Iran's new missile test a flagrant violation of the UN resolution. No kidding, folks. No kidding. Moving right along, and I am probably not going to stay with you for the full hour tonight because I'm going to be honest here, I am struggling. I didn't take my pain meds before coming on the air because I didn't want to be loopy, but I promise you I need them, and I'm going to be getting off here and getting them in very short order. We are moving on to Mosul and the Middle East and the fight against Daesh. Oh yeah, we are moving right along, folks. And for those of you new listeners to my show, Daesh, ISIS, and ISIL, they're the same cats. 
They got different names. And they don't like being called Dash. Which is why this wonderful host quite happily agrees to call them Dash. Because the less they like it, the more I'm happy to do it. What can I say? I just like poking bears with sticks. All right, so there was an Operation Inherent Resolve update today. Let's play some of the audio clips for that, and we'll talk about them as we go. In Syria, the Syrian Democratic Forces, with their affiliated Syrian Arab Coalition fighters, continue to clear, back clear and strengthen defensive positions four to five kilometers west of Tabqa Dam. As local Arab tribes join the ranks, the coalition will continue to bolster these fighters' abilities with training, weapons, and equipment, as we have already done for more than 3,000 members of the SAC. Most recently, the coalition provided several Guardian armored vehicles to provide the Syrian Arab coalition with increased survivability from ISIL small arms and improvised explosive device threats. Coalition efforts to isolate and pressure Raqqa continue. As we've discussed before, Raqqa represents the nexus of ISIL's external operations. With that in mind, we continue conducting strikes there to disrupt the enemy while the city is being isolated. Oh yeah. They are definitely trying to isolate Raqqa and kick Dash to the curb. Oh boy, howdy are they ever. Yeah, I'm a little bit daffy tonight, guys, but trust me, I wouldn't be any... I'd be more daffy if I had taken my pain meds. So... And I am struggling tonight. I will not de deny it. So... Got a couple of Mosul stories I want to give to you in Raqqa and Syria. It all ties in with what we were just talking about. We're going to kick off with Raqqa. A Syrian opposition figure who wished to remain anonymous says he controls 3,000 Arab fighters and that they are training with the U.S.-led coalition forces <clears throat> to help drive Dash from its de facto capital in the city of Raqqa. All right, guys, you're going to have to hang on a second while I grab a sip of water. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me for just one second. Of course, Mr. Frog has not taken a hiatus. Yet think he ever will? I don't. I swear he knows when I'm on the air. And that's when he rears his ugly head the most. All right, back to Syrian Democratic Forces. We, now we are preparing for the Battle of Wa Raqqa. There is tra a training program with the coalition forces. We will be ready to enter this battle in force. We are in the process of preparing it to prepare for preparing for it to liberate our lands. The United States considered Kurds allies in Syria and has repeatedly said the operation should be predominantly Arab. This, the ethnicity of most of the residents of Raqqa. All right, let's get another audio clip on this. And we will be moving on to Al Bob. Moving over to Al Bob, since January 1st, 2017, the coalition's conducted 19 strikes, including 36 engagements in or near Al Bob to destroy ISIL fighters, equipment, artillery, fighting positions, tunnels, and command and control nodes. These strikes are coordinated through the Turkish army, 
by liaison officers in strike cells to ensure we understand the disposition of Turkish military forces on the ground as we strike. So we are now working with Turkey. Oh, got to say, at least we don't have a Turkey in chief leading us. Al Bob has been one of the. Excuse me, folks. Al Bob has been one of those real big hotspots, and it's been all over the news. And here's the latest. Oh yeah, I've got more on Al Bob. What, you thought that little clip was going to be it? Really? I may be wounded, but I ain't that weak, folks. A rapid advance by the Syrian army towards the dash-held city of Al Bab was sparking a confrontation with Turkey. Pull out those scorecards, folks. Turkey and Syria don't like each other. And Turkey and Russia are frenemies, and we are using a Turkish airbase to help bomb Dash. That's the real quick update. Oh, and of course, Syria is being propped up by Russia and Iran. Northern Syria is one of the most complicated battlefields of the multi-sided Syrian war with Daesh. It's now being fought there by the Syrian army, Turkeys, and rebel allies, and an alliance of U.S.-backed Syrian militias. In less than two weeks, Syria army, Syrian army units will move to within four miles of al Bab, a city that is also being targeted in a campaign waged by the Turkish military, its allies, and groups fighting under the Free Syrian Army banner. Oh boy. This is shaping up to be a real clash. If a clash does occur, it will, however, be the first time Syrian government forces have confronted the Turkish army on the ground in northern Syria since Turkey launched its operation in August. Russia, Assad's most powerful eye, has carried out airstrikes targeting Daesh in the al Bab area, in support of both sides, underlining big shifts in the diplomatic landscape. No kidding. If Russia's actually trying to play ball with the coalition, something's changing. Am I sure what? Absolutely not. Can I tell you something to paw? You betcha. What was that, host kitty? <coughs> yeah, he says something's a paw too. What can I say? He's got his own opinions. You gotta give him his first meow rights. I don't mind if he occasionally sn slips in an opinion here or there. This could make things really interesting, though. Turkey launched its campaign in the Syria Euphrates sh in the in Syria called Euphrates Shield, Shield in order to secure its frontier from Daesh and halt the advance of the cur powerful Kurdish YPG militia. Helping rebels to topple Assad is no longer seen as a priority for Ankara. In other words, they said, eh, whatever, we're going to ignore Assad. The Euphrates Shield campaign has carved out an effective buffer zone controlled by Turkey. Back, back, Turkish-backed rebel cr groups obstructing YPG's plans of linking up Kurdish-controlled areas in northeastern and western Syria. And, as a reminder, folks... The Kurds are the larger, largest population on the planet without a state to call their own. All right. Folks, I'm struggling a little bit here. I'm going to be blunt with you. We are going to take that commercial break just a little bit early. And I will see you on the other side.
these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from the critique of the short story through to line edits on full-length novels. We also offer assistance on generating writer's bios for your websites. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. I've owned my company for 14 years now, and I can tell you that payroll is a four-letter word. I hate doing it. It eats up hours I don't have, and it costs me money I could be saving. But my accountant's too expensive, and I'm not sure who to call. But I know I need help. We're Paychecks, and we take all the hassles out of small business payroll. We save you time and money. It's easy. Call, fax, or give us your payroll information securely online, and we take care of the rest. We calculate the correct taxes, manage payments and direct deposits. We even send out your checks. Payroll doesn't need to be a four-letter word anymore. We're so sure that we can save you time and money that we'll give you a month's payroll free. Just for calling 877-757-2782. Get one month's payroll for free. Call Paychecks right now. 877-757-2782. That's 877-757-2782. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. over that commercial break. Yes, I promised I'd see you on the other side. Now, things aren't all gloom and doom in Mosul, at least not East East Mosul. There is one type of business that is booming in East Mosul. And no, it's not the suicide bomb makers. Suicide Suicide bombers, IEDs, improvised explosive devices, mortars, and airstrikes have wiped out everything in their path, including parked cars. Metal wreckage of vehicles can be seen on many, many streets. Mechanics and car repair businesses, their business is up by 50%. In some cases, they barter for, for repairs, and in other cases... They actually get paid. What can I say? What can I say? Iraqi military officials do say that militants will put up a ferocious fight to preserve their hold on the city. That means more suicide bombs, more car bombs, more mortars, and more rocket attacks. And the widespread damage to cars in Mosul speaks volumes. 
about the battles over the past three months. Yeah, it does. If they're blowing up cars and everything else, it's getting rough around there. <clears throat> Moving right along. What, you didn't hear the tap of the pages? That's because it ain't here tonight, folks. And it's not here because I can't hold a stack of paper tonight. When Dash Milton swept into Mosul in 2014, they wandered in, into a, bill a billiard's heart and declared it un-Islamic. They took away the billiard barrels with a stern warning. A, this is a place that was frequently popular and backed, packed with people. And his landlord is now de demanding two years of back rent. Even as the area is half bombed out, and all this, landlords are worried about back rent. I'm sorry. That just ain't cool. Across from the Billiard Hall stands what's left of Mosul University, once the one of the finest educational institutions in the Middle East. Dash sold the university's ancient manuscripts and imposed its own form of education, banning philosophy books. When the army arrived, the jihadists burned down many of its buildings, leaving piles of ash. A few pages of textbooks on hematology and diffusion were scattered on floors, cluttered with debris, and the cafeteria where tables and chairs were blackened from airstrikes and explosions. Now, keep in mind, Mosul University... was where Dash was making chemical weapons. Oh yeah, they were using that place of higher education, well, because it had a chemical lab for their own nefarious purposes. And here's a couple of clips from today's Inherent Resolve Brief about Mosul and Dash. ISIL continues losing ground despite using barbaric population control measures against Mosul residents in their attempt to complicate the ISF advance. The coalition has liberated about 60% of ISIL-held territory in Iraq. ISIL remains on the back foot in Mosul. Its leaders are accusing citizens of spying, and tragically, they are executing people who don't cooperate with them in some cases. Oh, yeah. Dash is getting brutal. They're getting real brutal. Basically, they've got the if you're not with us, you're against us posture. Moving right along. I've got one more audio clip, and then we're going to be pretty much doing a couple more stories. Then, folks, I got to get on up out of here because I'm hurting. I'm going to be honest. I'm hurting. And yeah, you, you're welcome to blame Host Kitty. He doesn't have an email address, but you can send a nasty message about ho ho messages about Host Kitty tripping me to Jesse's POV at KLRNradio.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Jesse's POV. And I will definitely pass on your messages to Host Kitty. Not sure I'll understand them, but I'll pass them on anyway. Now back to the Mosul battle. Although ISIL has fought hard to maintain control of territory in Mosul, we'll expect them to continue to do so. Their difficulty in maintaining control is no surprise. The coalition has made a concerted effort to degrade the ISIL leadership network in Mosul in preparation for the battle. Even before the battle ensued between August and October of 2016, 18 ISIL leaders in and around Mosul were killed by coalition airstrikes. Oh yeah, the U.S. has not been slow on the paw. Now, speaking of airstrikes and interesting things with the new administration. 
Trump left the White House today on an unscheduled visit. And he made the unannounced trip to visit to honor the fallen United States Navy SEAL. He and his daughter Ivanka left the White House around 3 p.m. And he went to Dover Air Base. and to meet the family of the fallen seal. And Marine One landed at Dover shortly before the C-17, carrying Ryan Owens' body touched down. The president met with the Owens family during a two-hour visit to the base. The sailors' family had requested that Trump visit and the re- Trump's visit and the return of the remain- Owens' remains to be private. And that is their right, folks. Owens joined the Navy in 1998. He was the recipient of two Bronze Stars, a Joint Service Commendation, and Afghan Afghanistan cam, Campaign Medal, among many others. United States Navy SEALs, folks. And I'm, I'm not trying to be crude here, folks. They love what they do, or they wouldn't make it through training. And... This, today's actions, were the actions of a commander-in-chief. However, because I don't recall President Obama, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, I just gave you the email addresses, same ones that'll get to Host Kitty will get to me. Jesse's POV at KLRN Radio, I don't ever recall Obama being on the ramp at Dover to welcome a fallen member of the United States Armed Forces home, with the exception of Benghazi, where all he and then Secretary of State Clinton did was lie like a dog. That those today's Trump Trump's actions today were definitely the actions of a commander in chief. Moving right along. I think we're done with Mosul. Now, what would one of my shows be without a couple of North Korean stories? Yeah, it wouldn't be one of my shows, would it, folks? Nope, not in the least. And this story will come as no surprise to any of you who are regular listeners to this show. None whatsoever. North Korea received a worst of the worst rating for its lack of political rights and civil liberties from a U.S. based think tank in Washington, D.C., Freedom House. Freedom House's 2017 report on freedom in the world stated that Kim Jong un's re- Regime violation of rights and liberties was ranked number one for the worst of the worst in the forty for for forty year forty four years in a row. I know that didn't surprise me, and if it surprised you, you need to tune in a little bit more often. All right, remember we've heard uh, we I've brought you a couple stories about the possible collapse of North Korea. I'd love to see it happen, by the way, but I don't think it's gonna. In my dreams, maybe, maybe, talks of a possible near-term regime collapse were surfaced among North Korean watchers when Thay Young Ho, a high-level defector, said recently that the influx of information from the outside, outside the country and expansion of market activities within the country are sapping traditional structures of the North Korean system. The regime is crumbling, and the days of Kim Jong-un leadership are numbered. However, 
Joseph Detrani, form, former U.S. nuclear envoy and intelligence official, said that while phase claims are, are significant, there's virtu virtually no indication that the regime's collapse is imminent. Now, he does admit his views are based on limited information. He still sees a functioning government in North Korea. Private markets are functioning and people have access to food. Gen Gauss, another monitor of North Korea's actions, is also skeptical of Thay's prediction of regime change. Notwithstanding increasing international sanctions, Pyongyang's economy is faring relatively well even under the recent food shortage. Let's just say chronic food so shortage, folks. Gauss, Director of International Affairs Group for the Central of Nav Naval Analysis in Arlington, Virginia, added that due to an extensive surveillance network of informants that covers every North Korean citizen, it is highly unlikely that information that could lead to a popular up uprising will circulate among ordinary citizens. If this regime is going to collapse, it will have to be from destabilization at the top. At, from the top down, folks. Bruce Bennett, a senior defense analyst at the Rand Corporation in Santa Monica, California, said there are signs of instability in North Korea. However, they are there. One of them is the deteriorating ties between North Korea and China. North Korea's only ally, I wouldn't call it only. It and Iran get along, but only regional ally? Yeah. Bennett also said Kim is a little desperate to do things that are outlandish and appear to be strong. All of these things tend to point to him having to a degree of weakness. We just don't know how serious it is. While you could say he's trying to refine his missile and nuclear programs, I think a significant reason why he did all of those tests last year was to try and demonstrate to the regime that he was really powerful. And I'm going to have to agree with some of that. I'm sorry, folks. This guy is young. A lot of the old guard don't, old leaders don't trust him. And he's trying to go, huh, I'm the biggest dog on the, on the block. You got to go with me. North Korea lawmakers and leading experts on North Korea discuss the US failed US policy toward North Korea. North Korea is continuing steadily and methodically and relentlessly down a path whose intended endpoint is a credible capacity to hit New York and Washington with nuclear weapons. America's po policy for nuclear nonproliferation in North Korea is prolonged and thoroughly bipartisan failure. North Korea has continued its nuclear and ballistic ballistic missile development in defiance of sanctions imposed by the United States and its al allies. And don't forget the United Nations has been right there in the middle of it. And of course we have the reports of, the North, of the North Korea's readiness to test an ICBM at any time. Senator Bob Corker said, report, quote, said that the United States finds itself staring down the barrel of a North Korean ICBM and voiced skepticism that pursuing denuclearization of North Korea remains a reasonable policy objective. The window of opportunity to receive to achieve North Korea's peaceful denuclearization may have closed, and Kim Jong-un has, has decided, based on Iran, Iraq, and Libya, that North Korea must also be too nuclear to fail. It's unclear, of course, we haven't heard anything from the Trump administration about any shift in the policy against North Korea. However, Secretary of Defense Mattis is heading to South Korea as his first overseas trip. Oh yeah, Mattis is on his way out the door to go 
to South Korea and then Japan over to discuss a variety of issues, including in South Korea the emplacement of a THAAD system. Moving right along, I've got one more North Korean story, folks, and then we are going to wrap it up for the night. And this one is for you liberals. Special story. North Korea has a women's organization, the Socialist Women's Union of, of Korea. The North Korean official news agency reported that Jang Chun-sil has replaced the union's leader, Kim Jong-sun. Established as the North Korean Democratic Women's League in November 1945, when Korea was liberated from Japan, colonial rule, the union affiliated with ruling Workers' Party of Korea was renamed Socialist Women's Union of Korea last in November of last year when it held its first Congress in 33 years. The union restricted the scope of its membership to women aged 30 years or older who do not work outside the home. Okay, folks. How's that for a women's organization? I don't think they're going to be holding any protests either. All right, folks. My pain meds are wearing off, and I'm going to be blunt with you. I'm a hurting puppy. So I'm going to get on up out of here. Oh, yeah. I'm out of here.